Hey, we are back this afternoon with our lovely Robert Forsh, who is a very good friend of mine and joins us quite a lot. Hello, Robert. Greetings. Thanks so much for having me on today. Absolute pleasure. And hopefully Patricia sees the link and comes on shortly. Um, I've done quite a few hangouts lately. <laughs> She's not on the mm-hmm. catch up. Um, Robert, I put you in one of my videos the other day. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, that was um Did that you get that? I thought that was I quite did. good how I got all that. Like it was most amazing because if you know we've lost the main channel with all those hangouts on it. I've got some of them and I've got other ones. But I wanted to show that it was other people, not just you or me. There's other people, bigger people, smaller people. It didn't matter. Everybody is lots of people talking about what's going on. Well, yeah. And then there's quite a bit of mystery. With, I like uh, that with the history. With history, <laughs> history with history, and even even our current reality. What is the truth of it? Uh, that's that's part of the challenge with the um, with the very sophisticated form of de- distraction and deception. It's hard to differentiate. How do we determine exactly what's real? You know, it goes back to the discussion that Morpheus and Neo had. What is real? If it's what we can see, taste, feel, and touch, it's simply uh, electrical impulses converted by your <clears throat> brain. And and we know that we can be deceived uh, through cinematography, through movies. You know, we can watch a movie and get yes, to- totally I'm... into it and absolutely f- freaked out and panicked and all that. None of it's Robert, Robert, Unscrambled Channel. That's what I'm doing on the Unscrambled Channel is trying to show people the skullduggery of it all oh yeah yeah well and it's a little it's it's quite a a more devious level of deception when it's presented as fact when when we pay money to go into a theater and we buy popcorn maybe and and we're there watching a movie we know we're largely being entertained and and yet all of it is programming however when we turn on or, you know, when it's on mainstream media, uh, the socially acceptable norm and the highly choreographed public disinformation is out there, how do we know exactly what what the truth of the matter is? So even with the people that we know are some of the scientific deceivers giving a false reality with space travel and in different other things that we found out to be not true, <clears throat> they do quite often present quite a bit of reality in what they're talking about, which is very interesting because the compartmentalization that many of us, so, oh, Patricia's on. Hi, Patricia. Yay, there's Patricia. Hi, uh, how are you doing? Good, Hello, my darling. Good. Glad, glad you could make it. So we've got so many hangouts lately. I was just saying, Patricia's can't like uh, to keep up because we've just got well, we've just had quite a few hangouts. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you said four o'clock, and I've yeah, yeah. I did tell you about. I did tell you about this. Yeah. I know, but then you said seven, and I'm like, oh, it's all right. I'll come on when I come on. (laughs) Uh huh. We've got another one later on as well, Robert. But it's probably to do with even though we can't really go Christmas anymore the same. It's to do with the fact that at least some of us think that's more to do with family and things like that. So we can use this satanic thing as a family get together, at least for, a, yeah, that side of it. But yeah, I was, I couldn't help it, Robert. I just still trying to explain to people, you know, and it's just so hard because I just don't know how they got this past us. But anyway, hello, Patricia. And um, I just don't know. How, I just don't know how they got this past us when you wake up. And you realise, or you see it. I just don't know how they've managed to do it to us for years without other people not seeing it. Well, and then it gets very complicated in when we look at different topics, like um, the artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence, and the deep fake technology. And then, like I remember, I bought the movie The Terminator the original Terminator, and I've, I've shared that on my channel as well. 
a lot of the deep fake technology, uh, the voice, uh, when, when a Terminator would take over or would kill, terminate, come in contact with an individual, it could mimic their voice. Well, that's very much an allegory for what the artificial intelligence can do right now. With, um, with our footprint, our vocal uh, print on the, on the internet, there's enough there to make us say whatever it wants us to say. And also with a still photo, they can turn it into a, a representation of us that looks like we're saying what we never said. <laughs> and, and that's yeah, so Robert, complicated. Robert, yeah. Robert, that, that's on Unscrambled channel. Oh, yeah. But it's just, it's just crazy. What it is is that Crow also said it. Crow777, he said it on a hangout basically what were we doing it's not really something that, well it is happening now but it, it happened a while ago he said what were we doing or sleeping or something because we just allowed it but loads of us are noticing it but not one you know it's like there are so many videos on youtube about nasa and not one politician has said hey i can see it or let's look into this or anything and everybody's just moving on so this is how they do it because the people are saying we can see it we can see these things are wrong, but nobody's there to talk. You've got nobody to write to. I wrote to President Trump. I said to him, you know, there's, you're deep faked into things. You know, you're, look, at, look at these videos. Look at them. I said, what is going on here? And, um, you know, I said, are you running the country? Because then I still sort of believed it. This is a few months ago, but now I don't. Well, <laughs> you know, yeah, what, he's, you know um... I've, I've been talking to you about that, haven't I? But. Oh yeah. It's like yeah. I wrote to him and he didn't even reply. No, nothing, not even a little White House memo saying thanks for your letter. Nothing. Well, you would think they could have a chat bot and personalize it. Thank you so much, Karen. I mean the 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 level of uh Do you know what it would of, say? Of it would say it would say something like, I'm really sorry to hear that. Oh, it's so concerning, but whatever they write, whatever nice bit, it'll always add <laughs> but we can't we can't help you. <laughs> Yeah, we don't. We wouldn't it be funny to hear the truth of it? Um, I'm actually a chatbot presenting to be the president right now, and give you some kind of a you know. It it's not going to happen, but the the, well, the he, truth is. He may is, as well, Robert, because he's so many different people. He may as well. Well, we we don't know. Uh, will will the real individual please stand up? How could we how could we know if we were being faked? Because we. Uh, well, Do you know we what know. they say? They can't tell the di one. One of the studios said they couldn't tell the difference between a bad one, a good one, a real one, or not. But this other company said that they can make an algorithm which YouTube and Facebook can use, which would de detect and stop these deep fake videos going out. So if they wanted to, they could, but they can't do it, can they? Because suddenly it was a, it would be a bit like. The ninety percent of the videos would disappear off off of Facebook and YouTube because, and the thing is, then you'd find out that they were doing it to us, and the news were doing it to us, and you'd find that so they can never add this al this algorithm which would stop this. So they talk about it, but they're never ever going to sort it out, even though they could, because they can't, because then we'd see how fake they were. You suddenly NASA would disappear, wouldn't it? NASA would well, suddenly like go. Well, yeah, and one of the things that I find very interesting is that even the cinematography of of a decade ago or or so is still far superior to some of what they let us see in the in the NASA fakery. They're they're purposely letting the obvious ridiculous stuff stay out there. You know, as um as we're involved in looking into this i mean i i would say personally i've seen the the two guys in front and the one guy uh going through the hallway on a harness you know i've seen that probably a hundred times in a variety of videos if the artificial intelligence wanted to delete every occurrence that that's in it would be no problem for that to happen it could do that if it wanted to take every occurrence of of a, of an individual's cyber presence, like me, let's say, it could do that. So I I used to say, 
you know, when I die, um, the digital representation of me will continue on. Well, not necessarily. That could be deleted. That could be interrupted. Since we talked the last time, one of the interesting happenings that happened for me is I had my uh, my photo album with like 2,843 photos. The link was expired. So anywhere that I went to find that photo album, it would show me the broken link or or that notification. And then I asked God if he wanted it to be back up, that he would make that happen. And it's back up. It's just evidence, though, that that those types of things can happen. I found out... Can I say something else as well, Robert? Listen, you and I are different of people. Course. You live in a different country. You're a man. I'm a woman. You do photography, although you're beginning to change your mind and do other subjects as well. You know, but you've always done other subjects. But you know what I mean? You can... I suppose you can only oh, yeah. take so many pictures of the sun and the moon like you do. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, anyway, listen, you spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Robert is there at four o'clock in the morning. He's there at the night time or the afternoon, whenever the moon's come. He is there all the time. He has thousands and thousands of pictures and albums. He spent hours and hours and hours looking into what it is. And still, you know, half of you have to still convince yourself that everything's still a lie anyway. But what it is, is you spent hours. And they've got us in a society where you've got to prove everything in about 20 seconds because that's how long our, our concentration is now. We want wham, bam. <laughs> we want it as yeah. And it can't be like that. And I've done it differently. You know, mine's breaking down videos and whatever I do. We sit on panels and usually listen to the people. But we, we've spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours doing it. And I mean, you need to go and do your own homework. You need to go and slow some of that NASA footage down. You know, Boeing and o Boeing's first trip outside 2013 is a good one. It's hours long, but slow it down and look at it. Spend those hours looking at it for yourself to see what you see. There's a paused astronaut. Well, yeah. There's a paused astronaut on there. So, so one of the things that I've done is featured time lapse videography on my channel, and there are people. I've saved their playlists. I went to their channel and I clicked on playlists and like Time Storm Films out of Germany, Martin Heck has done a tremendous job showing beautiful uh, time-lapse videography from all over the world. And it's gorgeous and amazing to see the sky, the whole sky rotating all the all the stars together and a few wandering stars that are visible and maybe a aircraft or two and then to see multiple directions of clouds moving and the water being perfectly flat and level with the reflections of the stars on it now some of those were taken in norway antarctica the uh, bolivia they're from all over the world. And then I've got um, the uh, time, not time storm, but uh, that's one of them. But then um, Mike Oblinsky has done a lot of storm chasing time lapse footage, <clears throat> which is truly amazing to, to see significant and very powerful weather systems forming right in front of our eyes. And that's part of the even, even though I believe that that's real, to take that level of technology to show that is, is a level of artificial intelligence. It's a limited version of it that's doing a specific task. But for example, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show this right, right now. I can, can I uh, just mention someone else who does a lot of work like that? Is our Stan sure. Smith? Yeah, yeah. Stan does a nice job. Let me uh, flip this around. So I'm showing, um, well, it's a aerial view of the uh, of the ocean. Uh, that that one there is a little bit different. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that off for now. What I wanted to oh, there it is. So it's showing a uh, waterfall. So showing a waterfall from uh, overhead, uh, classic beauty of like. Uh, 
Oh, this is Scotland. Let me uh, let me bring it on over a little bit closer. So the beautiful mirror of the water, and then we can see areas of uh, turbulence. And then look at how grand that is. You don't need a massive ice wall to keep the water in. All you need is some elevation. So we could have an ice wall, that's one of the things. Or we could just have a little bit more elevation. Like uh, there, it was talked about, you know, they might, uh, they don't want us to go there. We might populate it or something. <laughs> there, there could be lands beyond. We, uh, we don't know. And by irony and paradox, we, we don't know what we don't know. And that's part of the mystery that, that I'm looking to help resolve. I, I understand that we're, I'm probably not going to be able to figure it all out. And I don't really need to. I just want to learn some of the things that can make a, a big difference in how I can actually do life <clears throat> and enjoy it. I enjoy less uh, toxins in my body. So I eat really healthy and I bathe in a highly purified drinking water. And I do that because that allows. Sorry, the... I didn't realize my microwave is on, but I just want to say, I didn't, I thought yeah. my microphone was off, but I just want to say, you're not on your own anymore. I mean, I know you're on your own, but you've got us. We're a family. We talk about these things. We're, we're where you oh, yeah. are. Yeah. So, lives. Yeah. So that's, uh, we've all got our, our lives going on in front of us and, and that we're, you know, trying to, trying to enjoy, I would say. And it can get complicated <clears throat> when significant people in our life don't agree with us. And, and, and it's more than that. It's not that they need to agree. I'm, I'm concerned for their uh, well-being. That's um, because if, if somebody were to say, you know what, we've looked into this Santa Claus thing and, and believe he really does take flying reindeer and deliver all the presents in an evening. Well, that would be obviously an individual that if they were an adult, it would be that they would be out of touch with reality. But like um, in the Truman Show, we it was mentioned that we uh, believe the reality with which we're presented. And I'm learning quite a bit of the function of the brain and the different ages and how it works early on in life a child will largely be very um, gullible i guess would be a way to put it uh there what i saw today on a video yeah, that this i is featured the reason that they want to send them to school so they can get them at a young age oh yeah well and and so even before they get them in school there's right now the the statistics that I've seen and I've seen evidence of it. The um, roughly one third of the children are on a smartphone before they walk. Before they're walking, they're on a on a smartphone. And I understand that. That's part of the part of the construct is that the system of control has much of humanity just in a place of trying to survive. So we've got households where people are working multiple jobs. And so even, even when we were raising our, our sons, when they were young, very young, we put what we thought was good programming in front of them and would put them in front of the telly. <laughs> and, uh, and what we found out, even some of that information that we were presenting to them was false and we didn't know it we didn't we didn't know that that whole cosmology that we were presenting with planets and space travel that that was false so we were a part of it the system that's that's one of the reasons why in this form of deception that so many people can be in on it. How could how could that many be people be in on a secret that big? Well, the system deceives them, and then ridicules those that won't go along with it. And much of human nature will say, 
hey, I don't want to deal with all that. I don't want to deal with all that BS. I'm not. I've got to work with these people or or live with them. So then, a lot of the seasonal gatherings would be kind of like for many a tiptoeing around saying anything that would be controversial. And 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 I've done that for years. You know, I've just kind of gone along with it. And then uh, at the most recent Thanksgiving get together. It went pretty well for most of the time. And then as I was leaving, I gave, uh, I was talking to the family at the table and gave them stickers. And I said, I have a lot of interesting video from all over the world covering a wide variety of topics. And then the conversation took a turn. (laughs) It it wasn't pleasant, uh, I'll tell you that. And part of the problem with that is that when like when I was interacting with family members at that point, I recognize they're part of the oh, programming that my wife receives that, uh, you know, she's, I've been public with this. She's <clears throat> been leaving me for five years and it looks like it'll be happening um, physically that she'll be moving out of this house with me within the next year. And although that's not the way I would like to see it work out, I really don't have any control over that. And so like her family that I was, you know, in front of at Thanksgiving, I was less than happy to see they're reinforcing the deception that she believes. So it's not just that it's a personality issue per se, it's also a recognition that that's part of the uh, programming that's causing, I believe, my wife to make an unfortunate choice for all involved and and including her. So when when we're dealing with people on issues that we don't know for sure, that's that's one Can issue. Can I ask you something, Robert? Of course. Has it, has it made you more determined because things aren't quite right with your wife? You know, like... Say she got slightly on board or a bit of interest, would you have gone less to the beach? You know what I mean? Like you'd have traded one for the other. Well, it, it isn't uh, that that my lack of spending time with her was a catalyst for any of this. Um, it, it's not like, so, so I'm going to answer your question a little bit differently. What I would say is that out of the crucible of adversity that my life has been, that's where a lot of the character is being forged. So it's not necessarily just happy fun time as the desired outcome. So much of like even the in the Matrix where the architect is talk. I featured the architect. What a classic line that is where he's talking to Neil about his first iteration of the Matrix was sublime it was perfect in every way the problem is the people didn't accept it because it was too perfect they decide they define their lives by the difficulty in that that they encounter and and you know what we um we're an interesting species human beings there's a there's a component to us that you know is is molded and shaped with difficulty and with pleasure both it just seems that the depth of our character seems to improve through hardship so yeah i would say i i would like for everybody in the world to wake up to the truth of what's really going on and yet i i realize that i don't have the power to make that happen so that even though i want people to be aware their rejection of the truth is also an effective outcome in the process of telling the truth. The, the truth isn't based on popular opinion. It, it isn't popular and it isn't an opinion. It, it's just the truth. And we look at, when I look at what is the truth of a situation, whatever the situation is, uh, is it true? Is it a reality? So in the context of truth seeking, 
I have found um, truth hides in a lot of interesting places. And one of the most precarious places is in the midst of the a lot of deception. There's a lot of deception that surrounds the truth. And it's in varying levels of concentration. Some, some um, programs, you know, like cartoonized Simpsons or, or even the, um, uh, the Muppets or the, you know, the different children's programming or Disney programming. There, there has been uh, an occult and uh, a programming of humanity using technology that, you know, quite frankly, we don't know how it works. People make parts and put them together, and television is absolutely hey, amazing. Robert. The, Robert, yeah. there's no way in the 17 and 1800s these people were building these houses and buildings. We acquired them just like the pyramids. So goodness knows what they've been doing from the get-go and what our real history really is. Yeah, and, the mis and we, the mystery we history. don't know. Yeah, there's mystery with history, and 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 quite frankly, we don't know what we don't know. I include myself in that. I understand that there's limitations to what I can absolutely know. Now, when I was talking earlier about the videography and that that I show the time lapse and the beauty of all of the locations from around the world is it's obvious when looking at like cliffs and mountains next to perfectly still water that that that's just the physics and properties of water that we see the water is relaxed and it seeks to find level and it doesn't stick to a ball so whatever shape the container is that all the water sits in I don't know. I don't know for sure. I know that in the videos that I've featured, it covers, they cover the difficulty, one of them more recently, in what it would take to actually do an authorized survey of Antarctica, and it's virtually impossible for regular, or I, I should say especially people that don't fit the profile of what they want us to find. You know, they don't have a problem with their puppets going and visiting and doing a photo op. That's all good. But they, they certainly aren't going to want to um, take a, a film crew that's going to expose the reality of what it really looks like or can we travel far enough to actually get to a structure, the firmament as it's called, some call it the dome. And any of that actually, I believe, is quite a red herring, meaning it's a distraction from the reality that we are very aware that they're lying about the nature of the earth we live on because there's no curvature that can be found and there's no movement of the earth that has ever been proven. I know that there are people that would say, well, here's a picture of the earth. Well, it's, it's Photoshop, but it has to be, you know, we've heard that again and again, but that's the way it is. We don't have uh, digital real time footage from off earth, like the, um, like from the moon and anything from the face state, the fake station is obviously projecting this false reality. So it's all about control. The matrix we live in is a is a control system. It's a it's a prison for the the mind of humanity. I wanted to touch on the artificial intelligence and how it leverages the the grand network of deception, including the computers we're using right now, to project a false reality the limbic system of humanity, the belief, the way that the global brain works. And I say global intentionally. Much of the much of the population of the world believes that we live on a globe. 
and that's part of the evidence that they're obviously deceived. Now, we know that many of us, almost every, maybe everybody or most of every, everybody on the channel here would be aware that there's something not quite right and that we've been lied to a lot. And that, that was largely what I endeavored to do with the videography and photography that I've been able to capture. And as interesting as that is, the seeing the professional drone footage from exotic locations all over the world where I, I will not be able to go there and take millions of dollars to travel and have the kind of equipment that they're using to do that. Even even like uh, Red Bull, the uh, the red that did the Felix Baumgartner space jump, supposedly. Well, obviously it's a GoPro lens because the the supposed curvature or the curvature that we see is a, obviously a lens distortion. <clears throat> For those of us who who know that they're lying about that, that's obvious. But the the idea of being able to not just the idea, the the reality that humanity is being manipulated on such a grand scale. It not only involves the the technology, decisions are based on information that comes through that technology. And we've got eugenics going on, a corruption of the genetics of humanity, as well as the food and the water and the air. That's all part of a very uh, elaborate deception. So, so that one of the reasons why I'm particularly interested in putting healthy nutrients in and on my body and keeping the toxic stuff out, including the information as best I can tell. I can even evaluate information that I know has falsehood intermingled in it, and I can recognize what's not true. And I believe by God's grace, him helping me, I'll see what I need to that's false in in a matter. Even in the context of that, there will be some things that I don't know for sure. I know that if I if I do what I'm created to do, I'm gonna enjoy it, even though others don't. Oh well, I'm not in charge of their response. I'm I have just, to say, Robert, Robert, yeah. what you're saying is you're talking to people on Sun and Moon who who not quite know a lot of this stuff as well, like you. Yeah, yeah. So even even knowing about a lot of the deception, what what can our practical response be? Well, one of one of the things is um, just doing the next right thing in front of me. What I believe I need to do. Uh, listen to people. I I put my phone number out there because for for a few reasons. One of them is I get calls from all over the world and we are being alienated one from another. And so that rather than a, like I just, even before the, the call today, or I should say before the broadcast today, a, a friend of mine said, what do you mean by this? Um, and it was a post that I made. And I said, well, it's a, it's, it's actually a thumbnail. It's a it's a playlist of it's my liked videos playlist. Food for thought. I present it like that, and I knew where he was going with that. It was the Matrix um, thumbnail, but then there's like 4,300 videos with that. He said, "Do you mean me? You believe we live in a simulation?" I said, "Well, no. I I believe it's real. However, it is a computer programmed reality. Much of the population of the world is deceived and they don't know it. So that part of the thing that we, you know, like I featured psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, people that have quite a few, quite a divergent group of beliefs on my channel. Some would call them new age, Hindu, name it and claim it. There's all kinds of perspectives. Well, and one of the reasons why I present it like that, I encourage people to seek the truth with all your heart because that's what it's going to take. An insincere investigation that 
immediately rejects uh, whatever an individual says because I don't agree with them or they don't agree with them, that's just unfortunate for them. So for example, is it against the law to yell fire in a theater? Well, probably not if there's a fire. However, if there's no fire and people stampede and somebody dies, that could be a serious issue. Um, now, if somebody were to yell fire and they have lit a match and you smell burning wood, but you don't know where the, or they burned a piece of paper or a styrofoam cup in back there, how would we know? Well, I, I wouldn't um, try and find out who yelled it and what their perspective was on the shape of the earth or spiritual matters. I, I would probably go for the door and uh, see what happens. We, we were at the Skyfall conference and uh, the, the alarms went off. It was actually a Miss America pageant uh, was, was working there at the same time. It wasn't a, a finale or anything, or it was a, yeah, I, I believe it was Miss America. And there were modeling agencies and really a lot of, not just pretty people, pretty people people and wealthy people and that kind of goes together because the if you start talking stupid stuff and from their perspective and don't go along with the deal you're not going to make it in this world if you're a if you're an academic that's like working at a university and you start talking about the truth about 9 11 or the shape of the earth you'll probably get escorted you might get a severance package or you, you might just get your walking papers. But if you're a ditch digger and you're burying underground cable and you say, yeah, I don't believe we went to the moon, your buddy might say, yeah, you're probably right. No, no harm, no foul, no big deal. But if, if you have an audience and let's say you're a celebrity that's got millions of subscribers and, and all of that, or, um, uh, a, a personality that a lot of people listen to, it could get very difficult. They can make things happen. Who are they? Well, there's there's two families battling it out. Uh, a good family and an evil family. <laughs> I, I get to work for the, I believe, God's family who created this world. I don't believe we're a, a cosmic cough or a celestial sneeze. And then some might say, well, what, what God? There's a lot of gods. Well, Hey, Robert, what, what, do you, what do you want to happen then? What would you really like to happen? Well, I would want people to make their, their decisions based on the truth of whatever is important to them to know about. And ultimately, the most important information is, I believe, what what happens when the body stops working you know whether we're in a car accident or the a heart attack or just die of you know being old you know you get not many people over 100 years old anymore not not for the most part but so basically i want people to seek the truth and where i where i thought it would be so obvious for them to find out that they've been lied to by looking at the deception around the, the fake moon landing and the shape of the earth. That totally worked out differently than I thought. Most of humanity that I've interacted with on this topic believes flat earth is just the stupidest thing. And anybody who believes it is crazy or deceived. And so what's, what's very ironic about that no matter how many digits they've got in their monopoly money bank account or letters around their name or social status, if they believe we live on a spinning water ball hurling through space, I know they're deceived about that. We still got the monkeys they said we evolved from, so I'm not buying the evolution. Now, the, the deal with the, the God who I believe created this world the real world, not the, not the fake world, not the deception, the prison that's all around. I'm talking about the real creator. 
Now, in different spiritual beliefs, there's a lot of different gods. I just have believed that the one who wrote the Bible is is true through through man uh, to tell us what the deal was. And so I I had such a change happen to me that I wanted other people to know because I thought I was born again as as it's called in 1982 and in in the years since then I've had the opportunity to work at a full-time Christian ministry in New London Wisconsin called Rawhide hey, Boys Ranch. Robert yeah. you're you're born again every day at the moment. Well you know each day is new each day is what I'm talking about is actually a change of I was a I was a dead man yeah, walking spiritually. Yeah, we've heard you tell us that loads of times. We've heard you tell us and well, your story and I, some of the things that have happened to you are horrible. Well, so the reason why I share that is that people can be thinking that they're born again, that they found the truth. Okay, so what happens with that, if in fact they're deceived on that, if they haven't really been changed, if they haven't actually been born again, let's say they just had a different, uh, a change of belief. That may not necessarily mean that there has been um, an indwelling of the creator, the new nature. So the evidence of the change is so significant and it's not popular with people that don't like the new me, that don't like the, what I believe the truth is about all of this. See, Robert, so, I know, I know that yeah. we're not, we don't look at Christmas the same anywhere anymore. But what are you doing over the festive period then? Well, I'll be. Is nothing I'll changed? Be, is it all going to be the same, or are you seeing family, or? Well, I'm not sure. Anything, I, anything I'll, nice I'll, happening? Yeah, well, I'll I'll probably talk to our sons and wish them a merry Christmas. I. I understand that the birth of Christ um, wasn't actually that time at this time of the year anyway, most likely. Um, however, it is a it is a family time of getting together, which I probably won't be doing with any of my immediate family. Yet there's a a much larger family and actually a You won't a be purpose. cleaning one of those condos, will you? <laughs> no, no, that won't be happening. Uh, what will probably happen is I'll get a call from somebody. I get called pretty regularly. It could be any time of the day or night. I, I put my phone number on my videos because it's a unique number uh, associated directly with me. So if somebody goes, hey, I, I want to know who this guy is, I see a phone number on the car or on a card. If they type it in search, they can confirm it. The spelling of my name is unique. Uh, Robert Forsh, if you, if you hashtag it, what will happen is there will be a, it's the, it's the number one result for that in the world. And the reason why that matters is because, well, it's an opportunity to connect with me if you want, or if somebody wants to. I'm wanting to show you right there. So that's what somebody could type in, either my my name or my phone number. If you just uh, try and uh, find truth on YouTube, it's a little bit more challenging because the, w the way that it is, they're making uh, video or making some information harder to find and that's part of the algorithm of uh, the deception that's going on it's it's not just that google or youtube will present information based on your likes and dislikes and social media activity it's what the system wants for different people to believe and so it's a very elaborate system of control the, the family get-togethers that some listening to right now on this, on this broadcast will be getting together, it can be a real challenge because what we believe 
by definition is what we believe to be true. If we don't believe it, then we recognize it as false. It's a bit of a paradox. So what we believe is what we believe to be true. And we don't know when we're, to be, to be clear, a person that's deceived doesn't know they're deceived. So last night I watched a movie called Limitless with Bradley Cooper. And then that's just one example of, um, of a, a pill that he took that allowed him to access the full use of his brain. And it was, uh, it was an okay movie, but there were some real downsides involved in that drug. It had health side, it had health effects. Well, in the, in the world of pharmaceuticals, uh, there are effects, health effects. Some would say side effects. I would prefer to say there's simply uh, effects from or results of taking anything into the body. Or even if that's just information that we're looking at and we believe it to be true. What's a little bit more complicated, uh, just for example, drinking diet soda. I don't do it. I don't drink soda. Uh, but the diet soda has uh, aspartame in it, aspartame. It turns into aspartic acid in the brain in, in, in the form of methanol, and it's very destructive to the perception. So obvious uh, chemicals. So just uh, something else to stop us connecting with ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's that, and then there's uh, fluoridation for many municipalities of the world in the United States here. And then there's also pharmaceuticals that are in the water supply. It's not that they're there just dumping them in the, in the public water supply. It's that when people urinate and they are on drugs, those drugs go into the water supply and there isn't adequate remediation for that. They're not taking it out. So I, I have a drinking water system with uh. the technology called reverse osmosis, and I'll fill up five-gallon water jugs with it and bathe in the water, drink the water, cook with it. It's perpetually drawing toxins out of the body. So the, the reason why I mentioned the drugs in the water supply is that some may be uh, drinking alcohol, taking heroin, smoking crack, coke, or having a little glass of sherry, whatever it is, if it's, if it's distorting perception, I wouldn't want anything about it. I want to, I wouldn't want it in me. And then, so the, the thing with the, um, the reason why I say there's health effects is understanding that we're in a battle and the enemy of our soul has uh, made a very concerted effort to corrupt our perspective with giving us false information, things that are presented as um, health food and they're not, and it's not healthy, or uh, weight loss products that are toxic to the perception, air fresheners and personal hygiene products that impair brain function, even to, you know, like aluminum in the, in the deodorant. It's all unhealthy. So for the people that are largely asleep, they don't even really think of it in those terms. They may think that there are, are greedy people that lie. However, they're largely unaware that the, uh, that the control system of the world is lying to them massively. They might acknowledge that politicians lie, but when it actually comes time to incarcerate them for what for their crimes against humanity it's not happening we can look at cheney and bush and and the different other involved individuals in the events of 9 11 of 2001 and they they didn't get imprisoned and a lot of innocent people died not only at ground zero the the people that were what may be viewed as collateral damage over in, in Iraq um, and Afghanistan. 
But you see, that that military industrial complex is not just the United States. It's it's worldwide, and the public opinion of people is shaped through this media control system to get people fired up about about uh, going to war and killing other people. It's terrible. But, you know, what can we change about all that? Well, I'm not doing it. Hey, Robert. Yeah. I was looking at some of our politics for last week because obviously there was a general election here. And yeah. not only did they make Boris diddy diddy in the street, like tiny, tiny. They also, like, I went to ITV. So I suppose here, if you're going to watch weddings and royals and elections, more people will watch the BBC for these things. I'm not saying for the rest, but for these things they do. So there was a bigger yeah. amount watching BBC, 53,000. But when I got to ITV, there was only six. Now, considering it was a landslide victory and um, momentous and all that, how come such a small amount of people watched him stand outside 10 Downing Street saying, we've got here, we've got back in, you know, we're starting the revolution now of getting out of Europe. Um, you know, if that was the case, how come only 6,000 people watched it? We didn't vote. Yeah, so that's that's interesting. I, I remember, Do you, you know, when I was... Do you what I mean? We didn't vote. So that's why there's such a lack watching on the videos because they lied about us voting. They, oh, because, really? Because so basically, you... basically the video shows yeah. that they made it before he got in because he's diddy diddy in the street and it's all weird. So they filmed oh, that before. Yeah. So the outcome was already there and it was always going to be a momentous victory for the Tory. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, that's that's one of the ways that they lie. Uh, they'll they'll do that. I remember when I was, um, you know, like 19 years old or so, I remember watching some political event that was happening. And there would be networks talking about it, but they weren't showing the occurrence of what like another channel would show like on. They called it C-SPAN, where they would actually show the the event taking place while the uh, the media outlets were basically giving their opinion on what was happening. And I thought, hey, I would rather actually see what's going on. But at that time, I, I didn't realize what a grand illusion all of it was. And so there's, it's kind of like an onion. There's different layers of it that we can, you know, peel through. And so, yeah, the the idea of most of the the controlled main opinion is going to be wrong, or it's going to be false. That that seems to be the pattern, right? Yes. <laughs> so so that's part of where the the real rub comes in is that people will base their their beliefs on what they believe to be true. You know, they'll look at something and say, yeah, I, I believe that, or I don't believe that. And then if you add a little, um, a little alcohol to the discussion, then you'll get people cussing at each other for seeing things differently. And then if you add that in excess and, and maybe drugs to it, and somebody's feeling a little ornery because they, they can't get their their drug of choice. Uh, they can get violent. That happens. Hey, Robert. Robert, yeah. we've been going nearly an hour. I'd wow. like just to end on a positive note. Maybe sure. Patricia. Patricia hasn't said anything. Patricia? Patricia? Yeah. I'm here. Yeah, our lovely Robert. Yeah. Thank you. Likewise. I love oh. your perspective on things, um, Robert. Like, really positive, and at the end of the day, we just need to show love. And, you know, it doesn't matter if someone don't believe what I believe, or it doesn't matter, because in, in, if you think about it, we've all been deceived one way or another by different things. So, you know, we're not, we're not supposed to judge people. You know, their 
their beliefs or their ideas are their ideas and no one else's and we shouldn't hold them against them but anyway i love you robert <laughs> oh thank you so much patricia likewise you no, know but I, he's, uh, he has actually talked about a few different things today yeah oh, well yeah. yeah i just wondered like have you caught any more of those sort of like bubbling moons Oh, no. I believe, uh, let me tell you where I've seen some interesting moon anomalies or appearances, and that would be on the, the time lapse footage on my channel. It's, um, it's the, the, the mountain. It looks like a mountain. Oh, it is a mountain, and it looks like at sunset. And it's a time lapse, and it's the beginning of the time storm playlist it's gorgeous well in the context of the moon setting it looks like the moon is going through some shape changes as it drops down through the different layers of atmosphere it could be that it's dropping through electrical uh an electrical presence the ether and if that sounds kind of weird just imagine uh, the northern lights and uh, and lightning. There's electricity and actually quite a bit of energy all around us. Now, one of the other topics that I didn't touch about or talk about exactly directly, and yet I'm going to mention it now, is about the renewing of the mind and the one of the other terms may be neuroplasticity. When we're when we're youth, when we're young, like below the age of seven, largely we're like a sponge soaking it all in. And that's when a lot of our unfortunate uh, deception has been implanted in our minds, whether it's Santa Claus or the moon landing or the Easter bunny. And then we're presented God and different spiritual beliefs, many of us. And then when we get older and we find out, hey, the whole Santa Claus thing is a lie, well, what else is there? What what else were we lied to about? And quite Robert, frankly, that's everything. A, well, almost. Almost everything. That's I and I would say it that way for a reason, because the challenge for each of us is to ask this question, I believe. Is it true? Whatever it is that you want to know, whatever matters to you, does this person really love me? Does it, is this uh, person, um, it, what should I do? I, I want people to base their, their beliefs on, on the truth about the actual reality of the situation, whatever that is. So that's, that's largely the big question. Is it true? whatever it is and that that it will vary for each of us in our own unique situation and then in general the collective view of humanity will have some you know certainly a, a difference of opinion and a difference of belief that's to be you know we know that's going to happen so when i put my phone number out there like i did on this on this broadcast the number one on there is for the country code. I'm also on um, the Facebook Messenger. And so I encourage people to reach out if they like. And even if you're not a content producer creating videos, one of the options that we have is to create a liked video playlist that we make public. Now, <clears throat> I, was, I was told that on December 5, that that liked video playlist was no longer going to be publicly viewable. I had to reset mine back to public a couple of times after I made a premiere. Even though it was premiering as soon as it was done, it reset my playlist of liked videos to private. So when I just liked a video and added another video, it didn't do that. But there are literally and i'm not exaggerating tens of millions of occurrences of my like videos playlists all around the internet it's on videos that i'm featured on it's on my photo album 
it's on it's in a lot of places and a lot of people have shared my content the reason why that matters is that it's an opportunity for people to consider that maybe something isn't right about what they believe that's yeah. largely what i want people to consider is to um is i know to robert you're a warrior you're a warrior a warrior or a warrior <laughs> a warrior yeah oh yeah and and in the arsenal of of the weaponry that i wield is the most powerful uh weapon known to mankind and i believe that's the truth the truth hey it, that's such a good note to um end on there robert the truth yeah yeah thank you so much for having me on Karen and Patricia, and thank you all Patricia, for. Patricia, do you want to say anything? Listening in. Is she there? Is she? Yeah. Um, as always, it's always nice listening to you, Robert, and interacting with you and stuff. I just oh, hope uh, that you, I. I hope you have a nice Christmas. I know we don't. We don't, some of us don't see it the same way, but it's like Karen says. It's time for family to get together and show them that they love them because we have to be of this world but not we have to live in this world but not be of the world so yeah. that's how i see it you know if we can use every opportunity that that's thrown at us to actually show that we love well why not do it i mean it goes every day of the of the year but you know if we can give that extra special person or people that love yeah then hey, I said, go for it. <laughs> Trisha, on that note, then, what do you have to say to Robert, then? Um, oh, <laughs> let me think. Uh, I love you, Robert. Oh, thank you, Patricia. <laughs> well, I, I love you, too, and I, I love you, too, Karen. Thank you so oh, much for Robert, having me on. It's, it's been a real pleasure. I love you all, too. Can and, I just say, can I, just say yeah. I really appreciate you coming on and talking with us. You're oh, a lovely thanks. friend of mine, and um, yeah, we both love you and love to the chat room. Mm -hmm. all right. Thank you all so yeah. much. All right. Love you bye -bye. all. Love, love you. you all. Bye bye. Bye, darling. Bye.